All right, now the final paragraph, which leads to question number 17 and 18. It's something like that. Let me explain. There is a ring and on one end of the ring, a person puts his finger and twirls the ring in this manner. When the finger is twirled, the angular velocity of the finger is omega naught and the radius of the finger on which it forms a cone is small r. While the radius of the ring is capital R, mass is m. And the ring rolls over the finger without slipping. The coefficient of friction given is mu. And apart from that, the ring does not slip downwards. The top view is this. The ring is twirling around the finger and the finger makes the radius small r. On the basis of this, we need to find the total kinetic energy of the ring. The first point is, for the finger, the angular velocity is omega naught. While you could see that the ring also rotates around its axis, which passes through the center of mass with the same angular velocity omega naught. But apart from that, the ring also makes a circular motion or rather the center of the ring goes in a circular motion and let's say the velocity of the center of mass is vcm here you need to understand omega naught of the ring that we have considered is with respect to its center of mass so omega naught is the angular velocity of the ring with respect to its own center of mass this can be easily concluded because by the time the finger completes one revolution, the ring would have also rotated one complete revolution. All right, but the ring in fact goes in this way and together the ring also rotates around its own center of mass. Now to find a relation, this is the point. The velocity of the finger is this at this particular point. And the velocity of the ring should also be the same. And you could see the velocity of this point of the ring would be omega naught capital R minus of Vcm. So for the ring, the net velocity has been calculated. Motion around the center of mass of the ring plus the velocity of the center of mass. And this now gives us a conclusion. Vcm is omega naught capital R minus of small r. All right, now let's find the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the ring would be half m vcm square plus half mr square omega naught square. And this comes out to be half m omega naught square r minus small r whole square plus half m r square omega naught square. This is the conclusion that we have reached on the basis of the given data. However, the options given as per the question paper does not match with the solution that we have found. But in one condition, if we put up that condition, though it's not given in the question, but for the sake of matching the option, if we put up this particular condition, small r, very, very less than capital R, in that given situation, the kinetic energy would be equals to 2m or that 2 would be not there, m omega naught square r square because this would be neglected and that kinetic energy in that case would be matching with option number C. We again insist on the basis of the data that had been provided, the solution and the value of kinetic energy conclusion that we could reach is on this particular option. Now, let's move to the next question, question number 18. All right, now, question number 18 says, the minimum value of omega naught below which the ring will drop is. If we show the figure from the top view, and here is the finger revolving, now you could see, if we visualize the whole ring with respect to this particular axis, then you would see the center of mass of the ring would be 
revolving and in that situation the angular velocity would be omega naught. So what I can say is that the center of mass of the ring is moving in a circular motion with a radius of capital R minus small r. Now if I make the free body diagram the normal reaction would be in this direction. F would be upward and cross would be mg. mg would be in the downward direction. Of course, that mg would act here, but that hardly matters. Now here, F is equal to mg. That is equation number 1. And normal reaction would be m omega naught square r minus small r. That is equation number 2. From these two particular equation, you know, F would always be less than equal to mu s times n for no slipping. So, mg would be less than or equal to mu s times n and that mg would be less than equal to mu s times m omega naught square r minus small r. This m and this m would get cancelled and the minimum value of omega naught would be under root g by mu s r minus r which is matching with option number c. Here the coefficient of the limiting friction has been denoted by mu, here it is denoted by mu s, that is all the same thing. So with this we end up question number 18 and the discussion of paper 2 physics JE advance 2017. Hope these discussions were very useful to you and I wish you all the best for your future. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot.